Wow, NVIDIA has truly been revolutionary lately. 60 hertz. Now with reflex low latency mode. Hey guys, and welcome to my channel, Time is But a Window. Now, before I get into today's video, I need to mention that I am not sponsored by NVIDIA. But I'm not gonna lie, I'd like to be. Especially because as of late, they've recently unveiled the RTX 3070, 3080, and 3090. The 3070 itself is supposed to be faster than the 2080 Ti. Meanwhile, the 3080 is going to be twice as fast as the RTX 2080. And some reports are even saying that the 3090 is almost twice as fast as the 2080 Ti. And while all of this is absolutely phenomenal, what really interests me is this new technology they're talking about called Reflex. Now it seems like ever since Nvidia released the ultra low latency mode, they've had this new interest in system total latency. And this is most likely because ultra low latency mode didn't really live up to its name. Well, technically it did, but only in a very specific way. And what I mean by that is you only really got positive results if you were maxing out your GPU. And I do mean maxing out. For best results, you had to be using at least 99% of your GPU. Now, the first time I heard anything about this was from Battle Nonsense. He has an entire YouTube channel dedicated to talking about input latency. And in his tests, he found when he was using 99% of the GPU, it did lower the overall latency by about 10 milliseconds. But whenever the GPU's load was lower than that, it actually increased the amount of average latency. So I'm pretty sure you can understand why this would be a bad thing for a competitive gamer. In general, competitive games are more CPU oriented and a lot less stressful for the GPU so you can get higher frame rates. Extreme example of FPS games like this are Counter-Strike Global Offensive and Valorant. Now because of this, many people reached out to Nvidia and talked about if this might be a bug. It turned out this was not a bug, which you should be able to tell by looking over at the RX 5700, which has its own version of ultra low latency called anti lag and gets the exact same results when it's turned on. But obviously, competitive gamers weren't happy about this, and NVIDIA saw an opportunity here. Now, this is where NVIDIA Reflex comes in. Now, NVIDIA Reflex has three main components. The first one, in my opinion, is the most important. This is the one that can help everyone. It is a software component. If you look at the gray line, it's a GTX 660 Super at 60 Hertz. The dark green line following that is what the software turned on. NVIDIA Reflex SDK is a new set of APIs for game developers to reduce and measure rendering latencies. By integrating directly with the game, Reflex Low Latency Mode aligns game engine work to complete just in time for rendering. This eliminates the GPU render queue and reduces the CPU back pressure. NVIDIA Reflex will deliver latency improvements in GPU intensive gaming scenarios on a GeForce GTX 900 or higher. Then it gives a list of top competitive games including Fortnite, Valorant, Apex Legends, Call of Duty Black Ops, Cold War. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Call of Duty Warzone, and Destiny 2. Hey, wait a second, where's Counter-Strike Global Offensive? You can't talk about competitive FPSs without bringing in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I'm gonna assume that this is not the full list of games and that there's probably more games this is compatible with. Either way, let's move on. With popular mid-range cards like the GeForce GTX 1660 Super, gamers can expect up to 33% improvement in PC responsiveness. Add in a GeForce RTX 3080 and 360 60 hertz G-Sync esports display for even lower latencies. Now, honestly, I'm not entirely sure what they mean by that, but here are a couple possibilities. Now, when it comes to the graphics card, obviously they want to sell RTX 3080, but is it the card itself that's going to give you lower latency, or are you going to get lower latency because of the GPU load, because it's a more powerful card? On the other hand, it could be the way that they have the card processing information requires it to take less time, which is going to lower the latency. They don't exactly go into details about this, but generally, if you get a more powerful card, it's going to lower the latency. So I'm not sure if there is any new specific technology that lowers latency in the 30 series cards. But when we get to monitors, that's a little bit easier to understand. Monitor input latency can be broken down into three parts. Signal processing lag, which is the amount of time it takes for the signal to get from your computer to your monitor. Typically a good TN panel takes a little bit over 2 milliseconds, but you can get some IPS panels that are down to 0.3 milliseconds. 
Response time, which is how long it takes for the pixels to actually change colors, and the monitor hertz, which you can think of as frames. So for example, if you had a thousand frames per second and a thousand hertz monitor, each frame would take one millisecond. At 240 hertz, it's a little bit over four milliseconds. And at 360 hertz, it's about 2.8 milliseconds. So I'm sure you can see how many milliseconds you can save just with a graphics card and monitor alone, even without any special technology. But how is Reflex Ultra Low Latency actually going to lower your latency? The Reflex SDK allows game developers to implement a low latency mode that aligns game engine work to complete just in time for rendering, eliminating the GPU render queue and reducing CPU back pressure in GPU bound scenarios. The Reflex SDK shares some similarities to the ultra low latency mode in the driver. However, by integrating directly into the game, we are able to control the amount of back pressure the CPU receives from the render queue and other stages of the pipeline. Additionally, the SDK offers a feature called low latency boost. This feature overrides the power saving features on the GPU to allow the GPU clocks to stay high even when heavily CPU bound. Even when the game is CPU bound, longer rendering times add latency. Now I wonder if this means it counters the issue that we saw on the original ultra low latency mode, where if you were below 99% on the GPU and you were using ultra low latency on ultra mode, you were getting higher latency times. Competitive gamers generally avoid higher resolutions when playing first person shooters due to the increased rendering load and latency. However, with NVIDIA Reflex, you can get lower latency at higher resolutions. Competitive shooters are dynamic, changing back and forth between GPU and CPU boundedness. If there is an explosion with lots of particles, the game becomes GPU bound. The Reflex SDK will keep latencies low by not letting the work for the GPU queue up. If the rendering is simple and the game is CPU bound, for example, Valorant or Counter-Strike Global Offensive, the Reflex SDK will keep latency low by maintaining high GPU clock frequencies. Aha! So it does sound like this will be the fix to the issue we were experiencing with ultra low latency mode set on ultra. Regardless of the state, Reflex SDK intelligently reduces render latency for the given configuration. Now this is said to be coming out on September 17th, and obviously it's going to have a limited release since it has to be implemented within the game. And while I don't see Counter-Strike Global Offensive on either of these lists, I can't imagine that they would just completely ignore this. On the bottom here, you can even see the menu from what looks like Valorant on how you can turn this on. But what if Counter-Strike doesn't support this? Well, it pretty much just says to use ultra low latency mode on ultra. Though obviously since we know Counter-Strike Global Offensive is a CPU bound game, this is actually going to make your latency worse. The good news is, however, if a game supports both NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency Mode and Ultra Low Latency Mode, it'll prioritize the Reflex Low Latency Mode. Also on September 17th, when the drivers are updated for NVIDIA's cards, you should be able to track the metrics of latency. Here you can see an overlay that's showing his average FPS and the average system latency. Overall, I have to admit this is a great step in the right direction. Even if not all competitive FPS support it right now, you can expect all future ones to definitely look into this technology. Here are a couple examples of why this is so important. Now here you can see Jordan Nothing Gilbert doing a double door pick in Valorant. In this first test, he's using reflex low latency off on 144 hertz monitor. Now the way this is set up, and I guess future NVIDIA supported monitors are set up, is the mouse is connected straight to the monitor. As soon as you click, the monitor has a green light show up, and you can see that he shoots him in the beginning of his chest. But the shot doesn't hit because of the system latency. This is because the model has technically already actually crossed even though he hasn't technically crossed on his screen. Meanwhile, when he switched over to reflex low latency mode and got onto a 360 hertz monitor, he was able to hit it no problem. Now, I'm sure you can understand how important something like this would be in a game like Counter-Strike, especially on a map like Dust2 when you're trying to pick middle. Still though, there's a much more overlooked advantage to having lower system latencies. Basically, that advantage is that because it's drawing things out closer to real time, you're actually going to see things a little bit quicker. For example, you will see a player come around a corner before he even realizes he's around that corner if he has higher system lag. Overall, I'm just glad to see this is finally being tackled by a major player in the gaming industry. While right now it doesn't seem to be supported by Counter-Strike Global Offensive, for the games it does support, this is going to be revolutionary. Anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and as always, have a great day.